Welcome to SMG, Symbolic Mind Generation. I changed the name, man. I think a couple of people had the symbolic name on there, so it was kind of hard to find me on there. But a new channel, Symbolic Mind Generation. I know I'm supposed to be doing a video today about uh, analyzing your dreams and stuff like that. But we're not going to do that today. Uh, some people contact me and stuff about my last video about talking about the millennials and stuff like that. And they asked me to do this. You know, I told them in the last video I had to, I do the scare straight programs and I think I felt like I had a trouble re reaching my audience. So what I'm going to do today, I'm going to take y'all, I'm going to I'm going to run right through it. I'm going to go from start to finish, you know, from my freedom to prison to now. I'm going to try to do this in 20 minutes. You know what I'm saying? So let's get to it. Title of this video is Scare Straight. Now, if you're a young kid out there and you're looking at, you know, the cars or whatever, you're looking at the material things, or you're somebody out there just, just living that life and you in the game, man, this video is for you. So don't forget to hit that like, subscribe button, share this to all whoever, whoever need to hear this. The first thing you have to do when you're in these streets and you hustling, you have the knowledge that you have uh, the drug selling is more addictive than using. How many times your girlfriend, your wife, your baby mama, whoever it is you dating, ask you to come on, let's take a vacation, but you just can't go? Because you're addicted. You're addicted to these streets. You know what I'm saying? How many times are you going to say to yourself, man, just shit. You got a half a million, but you need to get to a million. You got a million, but you need two million. Come on, bro. Leave right now. Jail ain't for you. You a player. You a player out here, man. Jail ain't for no players. Especially in the feds. Ain't nothing player about it. Nothing. So here go my step by step. They tell me what I'm looking at. I'm looking at a life sentence. On the next visit when my girl comes see me, I tell her to go live her life. I can't ask her to ride with me or expect her to ride with me. I'm just only asking for more heartache. I know what I'm looking at. Through the glass, on the phone, through the glass, Go live your life, baby. Man, this shit is the worst. I couldn't, man. Ain't no way. I couldn't, man. When they asked me to tear off, man, I'm like, man, shit. I couldn't put no man through what I was going through. No fucking way. I had already seen the worst. I had to tell my woman that I love so much to go live her life, bro. You know what that mean? Go be with other men. Bruh, jail ain't for me. I don't know if it's for you. Now I'm in the pretrial stages. Now listen, if you're ever in this kind of trouble, pretrial is the most important stage of your whole bit. Everything on your mind, man, you, it got to be brought up during pretrial. If you get to the trial and try to bring it up, man, you're going to be dead in the water. I'm going to give you an example. I saw a discrepancy in my wiretaps on my case. They, t they cut out two days. Whatever was said on them two days, it couldn't be heard by no jury. I peep it. They get a jury, the, the, the manuscripts and everything, or the wiretaps, and those two days are missing. But the jury not connecting the dots. So me and my lawyer, I got a bullshit lawyer. You know, acting like he for you, but let me tell you about the lawyers and the prosecutors, man. They got relationships. They owe each other favors, you know. Hey, Dan, let me get this one. Yeah, my client, you know, he, you know, he, he got $30,000. You know, I break it down the middle with you. Let's get him 10 years, 12 years. Can you do that for me, Dan? That's how they work. That's how they work. You can be innocent. That's how they work. You can't trust them. So I filed a motion, man, to suppress the wiretaps on my case. Shoot it up there. 
to the judge by fax. He shoot it down and say, I can't file it because I'm represented by counsel. Do I fire my lawyer and file it and represent myself? No, I ain't like that. I ain't like that in the courtroom. I only been studying my case for the, the few months since I've been arrested. And I learned how to do that in a few months. Guess what happened at the trial? An issue about the wiretap because I made it my lawyer bring it up. I'm like, you're going to say something about this shit. Guess what the judge said? It should have been brought up at pre-trial with a motion. Now, Matthew, I sent the motion and he didn't honor it. This is kind of kangaroo court shit that goes on in the federal court. You're going to lose. No, I done lost my trial. I'm waiting to be sentenced. I go get sentenced. My little sister, 15 years old there, my mother, my aunt. When the judge sent me, he gave me life plus five years without parole. The way he said it, he sent me to the life. He said, there's no need to give me parole because you're going to die in the jail. What do you mean I'm going to die in the jail? Dudes get life all the time and get out. It's a non-violent crime. Like, what do you mean I'm going to die in the jail? Why you had to say it like that? In front of my family. You're a cold-blooded motherfucking judge. You're a cold-blooded motherfucking judge. Now I'm in the system. When I finally get relaxed and stuff, you know, the first day... I done got my clothes and shit. I'm finally the first day. You know, they call it a little work move for dudes to go to work, and they call it an education move. It's 126 dudes in my unit. After these moves from work and school, it's five people in the unit. I came to the realization that 85% of us ain't got a GED or a diploma. Cause they make you go to school. They was going to school. I was like, oh my God. I was like, oh my God. I'm talking about the unit clear it out. Cause they had to go to school. They put your ass in that hole, man. You just talking about you ain't going to school. You ain't got no GED. You be ass up in that hole somewhere. That's how I used to be. First day there, I'm like, man. That mean a lot about the education of us. Second day there, I decided to go check out the basketball court. Home and gave me some shoes and stuff. I'm going up there. I ain't being, you know, I ain't got nothing yet. You know what I mean? I'm going to go out there, you know, and try to, you know, I ain't played in about 10 years. I know I said I might as well get started. I'm going to be in here forever. I might as well get in some great shape again. So I'm out there on the court. My timing is off. My legs ain't, this ain't, you know, I ain't got no legs and shit. You know, the, my hands, I ain't got no hands. You grab the ball, I'm fumbling the ball. Like, it's just, you know, you got to get back in the groove. But I can't do nothing, you know, but, you know, I can jump a little bit and, I can, and I'm six nine, so I can block some shots. So one particular dude, man, he keep trying me, come bringing it in here, a little cocky little dude. You know what I mean? Not real big, just cut up a little bit. He's just coming in and I keep beating it up like three or four times. I'm walking back to the unit. Everybody walking up to me, giving me daps and shit. I'm thinking they like, man, damn, you can hoop. You know what I'm saying? Then they start saying shit, man, I got a lot of respect for you, Slim. You know how the DC dudes talk. I got a lot of respect for you, Slim. Shh. I said, man, what's up? What y'all talking about, man? Hey, that wasn't it, man. Wait till I get in some, you know, wait till I get all the way back. So dude in my unit was walking behind me. He come up to me and say, man, you don't even know what that was, do you? I'm like, nah. Man, do you know the dude who shot I was blocking? These dudes were so scared of him that they let him score. Man, from that moment on, I knew this was going to be, like, hard on me, bro. 
I'm like, what kind of sucker shit? What? This is sports. You don't let nobody score in sports? Like, what are you talking about? What? Shout out to Tom White, man, from D.C., man. People know him. You've been in the feds, you know who he is. Especially in the penitentiary. My third day there, I go back out to the court. Walking back to the dorm. See a dude on the left of me, looking right at me, got a fucking bone crusher. This fucking long. Bone crusher. Now, my nickname is Bone. How ironic is that? Somebody push me in back. Keep walking. I take my arm. I turn around. It was an old dude. He said, just keep walking, slut. So when I turn around and look at him, I notice it's a dude over here on the other side of him, us. He got a little knife. It's a knife off. This dude got a sword. He got a little knife. Shit. So he see that sword. over. Dude over here see that sword. And he turn around and go the other way. Another dude hit him in the heart one time. Bloop, he dropped dead instantly. This is my third day in. I was just selling dope. I ain't never did nothing violent, no shit like that. Nigga, you know, if I give you something, man, I ain't gonna give you nothing that can hurt me. If I front you something, you can't hurt me. If you don't wanna pay me that shit, man, you can have that. I got too much money to make out here. That was me. You know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna let you take nothing from me. I'll light your ass up. But far as if I give you something, you want to run off, man, I ain't going to never give you nothing where you can hurt me. Never. The most of my friends, you got some little shit to my operation. Come on, man. Anyway, I go to the court. Walk back, dude get killed, blah, blah, blah. I make it all the way to the unit before the deuces go off. That's the alarm shit, you know. That gun tower open up. You hear that shit. Everybody down on the ground, I made it all the way to the unit, man. Because you on the ground, you face down. I don't give a fuck if me rain, sleet, or no, then you better get on that ground. Or snow, excuse me. That's what it was like. In that first year of my initiation into the federal penitentiary, I'm in bloody fucking Beaumont, bro. Bloody Beaumont. Beaumont, Texas, known as Bloody Beaumont. I seen a, a Mexican dude stabbing another Mexican dude. I could hear the knife scraping the concrete as they go through his body, hit the sidewalk. Like, really? Guess what? That dude lived some kind of way. He was lifeless. He ended up living. I see a war between the Bloods and the Crips because uh, uh, Blood made a state and stepped on a Crip foot on his feet. He said, excuse me, Blood. So the Crip nigga like, Blood? <sighs> So much stabbers and shit about that shit, bro. The Bloods and the Crips about that one incident. This shit ain't for me. Where the fuck they sent me to? Is all this shit like this? This shit for suckers. This shit ain't for no man, bro. This ain't no man. This ain't, this ain't man shit. MS-13, GDs, BDs, Vice Lords, Latin Kings, Bloods, Crips, Aryan Brotherhood, Samoan Pirates. 80% of the jail got 30, uh, 30 years or more. 80% of the jail got 30 years or more. 60% of the dudes in there had life.
You know what I'm saying? This is what you're surrounded around. Because you're in a big-ass drug conspiracy and you got all this time. You go into that pen, you got a terrible, horrible background, or you got, or they give you 30 years or more, and 30 years ain't really a whole lot of time that the, like the feds give you for, on percentage wise. Bruh. That's what you're around. Nothing but a thirsty, bunch of thirsty ass dudes, bruh. Jealous because you're going to the commissary. Jealous because you got people in your life still, because you, you know, you're early in the system. Bruh. Killing after killing. Uh, 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 bats on the baseball field, softball field, man. It's a, it's a, it's a, two games got the bats. Dudes laid out everywhere. And you know what the the, the number the, the main realization that you come to after you've been there for a minute? That you in the you you not in a cell, you in a bathroom with another man. That's all a cell is. It's a bathroom. With, two, with a bunk bed in it that you gotta share. Ain't no two days the same in that. You might talk to your people, I'm gonna hit you up later. Nigga, later ain't guaranteed. You be on lockdown for three months. <sighs> later on that day, nigga, something happened, you on lockdown. I remember going through a lockdown, man. You know, you're on lockdown, they handcuff you. It's shower day. You get a shower every three days. They handcuff you. Stick your hand through the door, they cuff you. They open the door and walk you to the shower. They got individual showers, about five on the top, five on the bottom. I'm on the top tier all the way in the back. So I'm hoping, you know, when they come, they start in the back instead of the front. But most of the time, they start in the front. They never hardly switch it up. So by the time I get to the shower, man, you know, 50-some dudes and took a shower already. I got to get in it, bend down, let him uncuff me. He timing me on the shower. Bro, I look around, man. It's semen all on the walls on both sides. Mm, mm, mm. Who want to live like this? I bet not trip. On both sides. Semen everywhere. Come on, bro. Nigga, they nutted up the walls, bro, in the shower, bro. And you ain't got no shower head. You can adjust that shit coming from the wall. One little stream, straight. I'm sitting there hoping to splatter. Don't let that shit get on me, bro. Who want to live through this? Chill ain't for you or me. They tell you when you first go in, you know, your first appeal is a direct appeal. You're supposed to file it within 18 months after you get in there. You know what the percentage of uh, guys who win on direct appeal? It's less than 1%, bro. You know what that means? You now in the system, it's organized slavery. If you want to get a job in there, the jobs pay less than 12 cents a day. But you're crying about going to work. You think you're working for the white man out here in slavery. Really? Really? The fact that I'm sitting there right now, man, I can fire, I can fire this up. I can give me a glass of wine if I want to. The air smells different when you're a free man. You got to respect your freedom, man. If you got something going on right now, man, don't, don't tell yourself you need another 100000 200000 another million, whatever you're looking for. You got enough right now just to sit down, bro. Just sit down. Just sit down. 
Direct appeal get denied. Now I'm working on the 2255. Let's go back to the court that sentenced you. My, my 2255 was like 65 to, I forget, I thought it was 82 pages, but it might not have been that, about 65 pages. Right? That you got to file for extended, you're supposed to keep it on a certain number, you really got to put the file for extended, you know. So I sent it certified or whatever, you know, the court got to sign for it. You know, the same day that they signed for it was the same day my judge denied it. He didn't read it. It's the same judge at my trial when I was fighting. He mad at me because I'm fighting. When I exposed that wiretap issue, man, me and my lawyer cussing each other out. Guess what my judge do? He turned his head and looked away like he didn't see it. You know what I mean? And when my, my lawyer finally brought up that wiretap issue, he said it should have been brought up at fucking pre-trial. When I filed a motion, because my lawyer wouldn't do it, and he denied it saying because I was represented by counsel. The federal courtroom's like a, a TV show, bro. Straight bullshit, bro. They playing with your life. It's a TV show and you the bad guy. Come on, man. There's five TVs in a unit. Black, white, black TV, white TV, Spanish, news, sports. Everything politics. When you come in there, you in the car. You from Ohio, D.C., uh, Texas, you, whatever you from, that, that's the car you in. You go to Eden the Chow Hall, Ohio, D.C. table over there, Ohio table, well, it's like that. You got a bunch of dudes running up to you, like, come outside on the yard. They politicking about something. Some dude and got into somebody with an, in another car. You got to rise up on your homies and let them know you ain't with that bullshit to come get you. You got to rise up on them. You got to damn that beef with them. Tell them niggas don't call you no more about nothing. Shit is for suckers, bro. Don't get sick in there. All they going to do is tell you go drink some water. That's all they going to do. Go drink some water. Man, you got, man, you know, they got to take you out to the hospital. Man, they ain't trying to do that. You got to be down there dead. Who want to live like this? Guess what else? Some of your people going to die. Yeah. People die every day. You got a long stretch and you're doing a stretch, man, you're going to lose. I lost two brothers, a father. I lost 20 some family members, bro, in 15 years. Come on, bro. Who want to do this? This what you want to do? This what you call clout? This what you call gaining clout? Come on, man. Leave now. Now snitching is in. Now the fuck boys outnumber the real niggas. You in your car, man. They, you know, they signed me to, you know, because I was working on my case. I'm at the law library. They be like, man, Bone, won't you do the uh the paper, check the paperwork for the car? I say, okay. Nigga gotta do something. This your car. Nigga might, you know, this is your shit might save your life one day. Dude come in, paperwork ain't right, but he popular. He popular from, you know, where he from. Young dudes like him. Come on, bone man, give him a pass. I say, give him a pass. All I'm doing is check, letting y'all know about his paperwork. I'm not gooning. I'm not gorilla. Y'all got to handle that. Shit, two days later, I'm gone. Somebody in the car to dropped a note, said I was checking for paperwork. They don't play that. It's a new era, bro. Snitching is in. That's all they got to do. 
Are uh, you ever sitting in the hole? I sit in the hole about six months. Come on, man. Come on. This what y'all want? This the cool shit to y'all? This shit cool to y'all? Shit wasn't cool to me? Shit organized slavery, bro. Every motion I send up there, man, that judge shot it down. You got dudes in there right now wishing they just die so they can get some relief. Now y'all done did, you know, 12, 13 years. Now you come to disconnect. Now the younger generation, my little cousin that was five, six years old when I left, they don't even know me. Nephew, five, six years old, don't even know me. They 20 now. They don't know me. It's so easy to get in, but so hard to get out, bro. You know how I got out? Man, we had to get the first black president in the United States history to free me. Bro, you feel that lucky? Do you feel that lucky? Thank you, Mr. Obama. Thank you, Mr. Obama. I don't get out. If we don't get our first black president in American history to let me go. Out of 70,000 applicants, he only did 1,700 and he called my name. Come on, bro. You feel that blessed? You feel blessed as me? And my sentence in the judge told, told you, Mr. Starver, you're going to die in the jail. No need to give you probation. Guess what? I don't have none. Nothing. I ain't got to go see nobody. I get drunk as a motherfucker tonight, smoke all the weed. I ain't, ain't got to go check in. I ain't got to piss in nobody's cup. See how shit work? Do you feel blessed as me, though? That a black president going to free you? Your judge ain't going to give you probation. Everybody get probation. No matter how, I know dudes with four or five life sentences, if they get a time back, they still got probation. Yeah, there's dudes in there. I've seen dudes with 30 life sentences. Ain't killed nobody. He was a bank robber, man. He robbed banks everywhere. Crossing the state lines, robbed banks. They gave him a life sentence for everywhere he went. He had 30 life sentences. Never pulled a trigger. Come on, man. This where y'all want to go? This where y'all want to go? Man, I'm home, man. Don't nobody know me. I came out to Vegas. I ain't even go back home. On the bus with the ankle monitor on in the halfway house. Nothing. Nothing. All my dudes is older, man. Nobody, I ain't no hands. I ain't get hit with no hands with no five, six, you know, ten rats. No, nah, bro. But guess what? Guess what? The air out here is is is, is way fresher than the air in there, bro. Sitting on the porch, being a bum with a beer in my hand is way, man. I, man, I appreciate it. Suck ass shit in there, man. Niggas in there watching politics and come by some bad girl club and, and love and hip hop all motherfucking day. It ain't a nigga in there want to watch the travel channel. Come on, man. This is my second smartphone that I'm on in my life, man. I don't know how to use this shit. I'm scared to get a new one because I, I didn't, you know, I learned how to work this one just a little bit. I'm disconnected. This what y'all want to be? Come on, man.
no visits. They seen you anywhere. I left Ohio, went to fucking Beaumont, Texas at the damn near Mexico. Who come to see me? Transfer, you don't know where you're going. I'm in California somewhere now. I'm even further. Better hope you catch somebody going to Disney Disneyland and got time to holler at, come by and see you. <laughs> They're going to an all-star game in Texas. They're all, let's go see them. Come on, man. Who want Who want this? Nothing about that whole shit was fair, bro. Man, don't get on people your life. Took me 15 years to get out. Because we had a once in a lifetime black president that let me out. You think that judge gonna let me out? No. He wanted me to die in there, just like he said in my sentence. You're gonna die in there. Come on, man. You got enough money. You got enough money right now. Man, don't sell another thing right now, man. Don't sell nothing. Give it away. Man, walk away from this shit, bro. This shit ain't nothing in there. It ain't nothing. You addicted, bro. You addicted to the bread, bro. Man, you going if you if you if you don't do it now, man, you gonna get in there, man. You gonna be like, damn. You are gonna feel like a fool. Like, what was I doing? What, what, what did I keep going for? I ain't need no two million. I had a million. What did I keep going for? Come on, man. Give yourself a break, bro. Just take a break. Just man up, bro. Fuck all them love designer clothes, all that jewelry and shit, bro. Just take your bread, man. Just sit down, man. Go to somebody you can trust in your family, an uncle or something, know how to do finances. Or get with some people, bro. And just leave the shit alone, bro. We need you out here. Look what's happening to us when all the men was gone. From the 80s to the 90s, man, when they really started getting us. Look at what happened. We formed this new generation. This shit's soft as fuck. We formed a transgender generation. Cause we wasn't here. Come on, man. If that wasn't raw enough for you, man, I don't know what, what else I can do or what else I can say. This symbolic my generation, man. Y'all take it easy.